it's probably why I posted this new boyfriend too soon, perhaps debatably. Okay. Because what ended up happening was I just was so sick of going on dates with somebody. Yeah. Knowing I was dating them. Mm-hmm. And just that, that not matching. Like now I'll probably over index on authenticity. Yeah. Because I'm just like, I need you all to know. At First Rounds on Me, we believe that one real date is better than 100 pen pals. With our mobile dating app, we make it fun and easy for you to meet someone in person for a real date. See someone you're interested in? We help plan your date. Pick a drink, a time, a venue, and send that person a date invite. It's that simple. Welcome back to Crowdsourcing Love. I'm Marin. Today I have Alex Bennett with me. Hello, Alex Bennett. Hi. How are you today? I'm fabulous. Thank you for having me on. I was so excited. Thanks for coming on. I met, I've met. i discovered you through Mean Girl Podcast. I've interviewed Jordan. She's now a friend. Um, but yeah, I want to get into who you are. So how did you start in content creation? I started making content during COVID. Okay. I always had a full-time job. I always worked in like marketing or PR of some kind. And when COVID hit, I went home. I was living in LA at the time Mm -hmm. with my then husband. And I went back to Oklahoma because I was like, oh, the walls are closing in on me here. Like everything was kind of shut down. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma was a lot more open. Yeah. So I went home and I like stayed in my childhood bedroom with my parents, you know, like that home. Yeah. And I would go downstairs and... I would just make these videos of my mom, like real organic videos of her. Mm -hmm. And the first one I put up was I had dyed the bottom part of my hair like electric blue. So I saw this video. It was hilarious. And my mom is just like your classic mother who's Mm -hmm. just like, why is your hair blue? Mm -hmm. That one went viral. And I just was like, you know what? I'm having fun making these videos of my parents. Yeah. And we're just like living together. Like when in my adult life am I ever going to go home and live like I was in high school again? Yeah. Yeah. And COVID gave us the opportunity for that. So that's how I started. And I just loved it. Yeah. And so three months in, I sent Barstool a video. And Alex Cooper had just left. And Dave was like, we need a new female content creator. And I was like, well, my name is Alex. And I'm blonde. And I'm blonde. And I have Mm -hmm. long hair. And he was just like, hired me two weeks later. And then I was a content creator, I guess. Honestly, you must feel so special because so many people were vying for that spot. I'm sure. So many. Yeah. And it just was a right place, right time scenario. Right name. Yeah, right name. Everything. Like, I think I cut, honestly, they say, make the first five seconds of the video interesting. And I didn't yeah. know that at the time. Okay. But I just, if I go back and watch my pitch tape, mm-hmm. I started out with me and I cut to my mom like really early on. And I think it was just eye catching enough Yep. that it just worked okay. and I stuck out. I don't know how I did it. That's amazing. Do you ever, or I guess probably not anymore, but were you ever freaked out by replacing Alex Cooper because she's such a big name? Like you're gorgeous. You have a great personality, all those things, but it would be intimidating for most people to kind of step into that. It was massive shoes to fill. Yeah. But do you know what overpowered it was that I didn't want to be a content creator? Okay. Like, you know what I mean? That wasn't my dream. Yep. But I was like, oh, I've always kind of wanted to work at Barstool. Like, I like that they let people be themselves. 1,000%. And so what I was, more so, so I was like, second tier is I was scared of filling her shoes. Okay. But right above that, the most important thing, I was overwhelmed and, like, so excited to have the job. Yes. That, like, that overpowered any pressure. Any fear. Yeah, I was like, oh, I was like, I... Like, filling her shoes, holy, can I cuss on here? Yeah, of course. Holy shit, I can't believe I got the job. Yeah. So it was, like, more so that. And you were just excited. Oh, Because Bar still wanted you. And I was just like, how did I end up here? Yeah. You know, it's- It's surreal. It felt so surreal. Mm -hmm. So more so, I was like, well, this is cool. Yeah, that's insane. Um, so what was the biggest lesson you took from Barstool in general? Because I know you guys parted ways. You now have your new company, Just Media. So what was something that you learned that you'll move, that you'll bring forward with you? Oh, there's so many things okay. because Barstool is, I call it a flat organization in like the okay. best way. Yeah. Meaning Dave and Erica are super accessible. Mm-hmm. Like my boss was Dave. Yeah, that's crazy. So like to start Mean Girl Pod, it's mm-hmm. like you need approval and it's like, that's just a texture call to him. Okay. And so having, having direct access and him and I got along, get along really well. Yeah. Um, and so having that direct line to him. You learn so much like he's truly authentic. Yeah. And I love I love saying this, but like day five or six, I can't remember who it was. Dave or somebody said, 
the way to succeed here is to truly be yourself. Mm -hmm. And when all the mean girl drama would happen, Dave texted me and he was like, just keep doing what you're doing because it's clearly working. And so it was like, it, it taught you, so, it's a lifelong lesson in the sense of people are going to love you or they're going to hate you on the internet. Yep. But the worst thing that can happen is they feel nothing. I agree. Like, just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. It's this cool, ch it's cool for your boss to come to you and be like, hey. Keep going. Just don't, st whatever you're doing, it's working. And by the way, he, Dave Portnoy knows this business inside and out. And so if he's endorsing you and he's giving you that reassurance, that means so much more than some random troll on the internet who doesn't have a platform themselves. And he's so not a product of groupthink. Oh, really? Yeah, he just yep. really, I think he looks at every situation objectively. Mm -hmm. I've always admired that about him. Yeah. Because sometimes if people are a product of groupthink and the internet starts to go one way or the other, yep. you'll be like, oh, they're going to jump on this side. With him, I was always like, don't know what Dave's going to say. Yeah. Because he just spoke from the heart. I love that. And that He's Switzerland. Totally. Yeah. Well, he'll die on the well, sword, but... Yeah, I was just going to say, after like, that came out, I'm like, I don't think that's correct. He's not... He, he's but, not Switzerland. That's a bad analogy. But he's not afraid to pick what, what's true to him. Yes. And he doesn't care the backlash he gets for it. Right. And that's something I really admire. That's probably my biggest takeaway. Okay. It's just like, don't be afraid to be yourself, whatever that, whatever that is. It's so kind of pivoting into just media. That's so exciting. Tell us what's going on with it. When did this come out? This is coming out next week. Okay, so... Literally next Tuesday, just to be technical. Okay, next yeah. Tuesday. So yep. literally today, um, in you know, 26 minutes, we announced our first podcast that's like so just media has Mean Girl Pod. Yeah. And the idea was to get Mean Girl Pod up and running mm -hmm. and then take our recipe and rinse and repeat it for other podcasts. Yeah. But we were really picky about who that first podcast was. Probably talked to 25 or 30. Wow. Yeah. And New York based or are they outside? Th these two are in LA. Wow. So it's Brittany Schmidt, who's a comedian. Okay. And Brittany Furlon Lee. Yes. I saw your post about like a photo shoot you did with them. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they've got, it's called This Is The Worst Pod. And it, the first episode will come out, I guess, when this airs tomorrow. So the 10th. Okay. But we're announcing it today. So a week before. Well, congratulations. Thank you. So excited. Yeah. Can't wait to be bi-coastal too, because like I got to go there a lot with mm -hmm. them. And they're just, I love them because they're, they're comedians by trade, but they're really good speakers. They're really funny naturally. And they just believe in what we're building. Like they yeah. didn't go to a Spotify network. No. They're like, let's they take a chance. They probably could have. I mean, isn't Brittany, one of the Britneys is Tommy Lee's wife. Yeah. Brittany Furlan is. Yeah. Yeah, and so it's like they, you know, they're just and they're best friends and they're sweet as can be and they believe in what we're building. Mm -hmm. And so they're they're the perfect second podcast. I love that. You seem like such a leader. I think you're going to go far with this thing. Oh, that's really sweet. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, speaking of how far you go, where do you see it going long term? Mm. Well, so I'm going to answer that and then I'm going to put an asterisk on it. Okay. Where I see it going mm -hmm. is by the end of this year, I would like to have five or six podcasts underneath us. Mm -hmm. um, and the first natural question there is like, all girls, like what's, and it's like, no, girls, guys, they, is they like whatever it whatever is. Whatever it is, yeah. Come one, come all. It just needs to, we're not the network for everybody, right? Okay. We are simply like just media, like no bullshit. I, I think that there's a big call for the creator space to have fairness. Mm. So that's what I built was a fair, transparent, transparent. Like these are the numbers. This is what we need to make in order to pay your salary. We're not going to do a rev share with you because that's eat what you kill, but you're not the one selling your ads. I don't think that's fair. Yeah. So a lot of what we ran into when we left Barstool was these problems. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, we're not going to any network. We're going to build it. Yeah. So I did like a fundraising round, raised the capital, oh, wow. paid the salaries. Because I just, I love, I, what I learned is I love content. Yeah. But content needs to be fair to the creators. It does. And so that's. Because they're the meat and potatoes of the content. Like that's, if you don't have the creators, you don't have content. Yeah. And if you're mm -hmm. not empowered by what we're offering you. Yeah. You're not doing your best. I agree. So like if I have to take a loss on that, great. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm okay with that. You know, it's not about Because you're still going to go further. Totally. Like yep. it's a long-term play. Yeah. So ideally it's five to six creators um, or not creator shows. Mm, so I okay. call this is the worst pod as a show, but that's two creators, right? Yeah. So it could be a show of five people. I don't know, five or six shows. Okay. By the end of the year. And it's all podcasting. Well, not even that necessarily either. Okay. I kind of like these social forward shows. Ooh. There's a lot I'm down to experiment with. Yeah. 
So it's not a one size fits all. It's just somebody that believes in in creating fairness and loves content creating. Yeah. And who you see the potential in. Yeah. And the metric I put it against is like, can you beat Mean Girl Pod? Ooh. Because I know what we make. Yep. So I know what I can pay you if you can make more than that. And you don't need to right out of the gates. Yeah. I'm down for a slow build. Mm-hmm. But I need it to be, I need you to have a trajectory. Totally. And also kind of how Dave leveraged his platform to then kind of give other people platforms. Like you guys can do the same thing. That's exactly. And build it. that like little family. Yeah. That's, that's like, yeah. That's it. I want to use our platforms and I want to build the family. Yeah, I love, I love that you said that. that. Yes. Yeah. No, that's so exciting. And it's really cool that you raised money. And did all of those things like that takes a lot of work. You have to put yourself out there. You have to sell. I, you know, I, I was in such a <laughs> spot in life that mm-hmm. I was like, well, you gave zero fuck. Oh, if I fail at this, like, well, what, you know, that'll just be 2023 for me. 1000%. Yeah. yeah. You recently got divorced mm-hmm. eight months ago. I believe you said, yeah, give it, uh, yeah, we don't need the exact timeline, but okay. this past year, <laughs> Yeah, this past year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what was it like going through a divorce, being a public person? Oh man, it was hard because Mm -hmm. the hardest part was when you're going through it, you don't want to share that you're going through it. Okay. So you don't want to say we're having problems and it's looking really bad. And people, people are sleuths. Like they see everything. Right. And I don't want to be like, I think, you know, he's moved out Mm -hmm. because people are going to be like, boom, you know. So what I did was I went into a shell. Okay. And I just talked like I would I I was making cocktail videos and I which I've always done and I've always done this or that fashion videos. Okay. And my platform just became very surface level Mm. because I couldn't share anything deeper because it wasn't true. Yeah. And you weren't ready to share anything deeper at that point. Yeah. Because I, there was a part of me that was, like, ashamed Mm. for doing it. Okay. You know, having this divorce. Um, Part of me was, like, my brain couldn't catch up to what was happening. Mm -hmm. And then the other part of me was, like, faking it. I was putting one foot in front of the other online. Yeah. Trying to stay afloat. Yeah. And then you go out. I remember I'd be on the West Side Highway. Mm -hmm. And I always will see some people there. And they used to say, like, love me and girl pot or, like, Hey, AB. Yeah. And it, it turned into like, people would look at me and they'd be like, oh, hi. And I'd be like, they're, they're wondering. Like, where's, where's your ex? Yeah. Where's Graham? Yeah. Is she okay? Mm-hmm. Do people know, you know, like, and, and I was just, I felt it everywhere. Yeah. And there was such a disconnect on what was happening online versus in my real life. And none of it matched. And it just, it's probably why I posted this new boyfriend too soon, perhaps debatably. Okay. Because what ended up happening was I just was so sick of going on dates with somebody. Yeah. Knowing I was dating them mm-hmm. and just that, that not matching. Like now I'll probably over index on authenticity. Yeah. Because I'm just like, I need you all to know. Yeah. Because you were on one end of the pendulum and now it's swinging to the other side. And I feel like you're going to find your balance, but you, you're going through it in real time publicly and I think a lot of people go through the same things that you went through but the difference is that you you don't have just like a small town or a community commenting on it it's you know the world yeah we did check the demographics though and it is mainly the Oklahoma? state of Oklahoma really yeah like oh wow we pulled, our, we pulled our YouTube stuff in our um Brandon who runs like our content strategy he was like uh Oklahoma, really big on the YouTube. And I'm like, well, duh. They're like frothing at the mouth over this. Yes. You know? Oh, I'm sure. Because was is Graham very public? No, his his family is well known from the state. Okay. And he lives back there now. Yep. Um, I, I guess I should say as far as I know. Last I talked to him, he lives in Oklahoma. I think, he, I'm, sh- I'm sure he still does. Yeah. Um, And so we're both from there. So it's our family, our friends, yep. you know, and it's just. But if he comes from a well-known family and then you're well known, of course, everyone's frothing at the mouth like you know what I mean it's like they don't have anything better to do right and yeah so they're just it's it, I just it's find annoying it so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 but it it just makes sense because you're both like I know he's not as public but in a sense it's public in a sense he is yeah. though yeah 
Um, okay, so after you like told everyone, I was actually at that live podcast recording oh. when you announced you and you said like my my air my marriage ended and I, like it was dead silent. A pin you could hear a pin dropping. Oh. It was so like it was so sad and intense, but you were so strong during it. So since you've like told the world like, hey, I am divorced. Like, has it been a relief or, you know, how has it been since? That's a really good question. Um, so when we filmed that that live show, four weeks had to go by before it aired. Mm -hmm. For the first week and a half, I felt hungover every day. Yeah. And really mentally in a storm. Yeah. And I had talked to him the night before we did it. Okay. And it was the hands down the most emotional night of my life so far. Just, just fetal position we're both just bawling yeah because he knows that tomorrow is the episode mm -hmm. he doesn't know what I'm gonna say he did zoom in for it not the whole thing but he was on the laptop that um intern oh, Ams was holding I didn't realize that he got all I sent the zoom link to like my my dearest friends mm -hmm. and you know I just said because some of them I hadn't even really been able to talk to about it a lot mm -hmm. so I just said I'm I'm I've been in a shell but if you want to get on and watch before it airs, you know, to the world, you can. And yeah. they were all on there. And I sent it to him. And he got on. I didn't know if he was on or not. And he got off, I think, about 40 minutes in. Mm. And rightfully so. And, and I, it just was so emotional. I mean, you heard it. Yeah. And, you know, afterwards, I was in a tizzy and I slept a lot. And I just couldn't catch up. And I knew the Saturday and the Sunday because our episodes drop on Monday. Okay. And I was like, oh. It's coming. Here it comes. And Monday morning, mm -hmm. that when that thing was out, I woke up with just like a pep in my step. Oh, my God. And that's when I realized, like, the hardest part for me is the unknown, mm -hmm. sort of living the lie. Yep. And and just not n not so much living the lie not speaking my truth. Yes. It's like I did live it. Mm -hmm. I did that podcast as honest yeah. and as sweet to both sides which we both deserve. But you also possibly. had to be sensitive because there's a whole other person's life who's involved. Who doesn't have a microphone. Right. So I'm yeah. doing and I need to do right by our four beautiful years of marriage. 1000%. And I feel yeah. that duty for him and me. Mhm. Mm and so and I want to do and he told me, you know, he's like you I know you'll do it. And I and I felt good. I couldn't have done it I don't know if I did well, but I couldn't have done any better. I do know that. I think you did really well. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And when that episode was out, I just said, for the first time mm -hmm. in like a year, I yeah. felt just a weight lifted off. That's and I good. was like, here we go. We can yeah. move. It was like I could move forward. You were closing the chapter. You were closing the book, whatever you want to say. Yes. Yeah. And everyone knew. And at that point, mm -hmm. when I think when people know, you just, you're free to be you. I agree. That's great. So when it came to like actually deciding whether or not to get divorced, I know that you said um, the ending is happier if we end it now. And you mentioned that in the podcast and the live show that I went to. So what advice do you have for people who are making the decision right now whether or not to get divorced? And if it's too hard of a question, like no pressure. No, it's so I can answer it for me. Okay. And I think the answer, I think this answer does apply to mm. people, but I'm, I don't want to be like what I'm so, my mom said, careful not to give advice. And I said, oh, that'll be easy, mom. I don't have any, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. for the longest time, I kind of feel like I had just failed at the whole thing. Like yeah. I was like, well, if I can't make my marriage work, how am I supposed to tell somebody else what to do? Right. The further away I get from it, the more I realize, okay, because I can sit here and I can say one thing. I did make the right choice for me. Mm-hmm. And the way I know I did that was how I feel today. Okay. And the way I made the decision during it was I just, and I talked about this a couple weeks ago, last week. I had to trust my gut, but what I had mm -hmm. to learn was not the gut that has the society's standards in it. Okay. Because there is that gut that knows you make your marriage work come hell or high water, honey. Right. There's that gut. There's that sentiment that's really prevalent everywhere. Yes. It's like it's a choice, all these things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my learned gut mm -hmm. knew you put your head down and you make it work. And I could have done that. Yeah. But my gut gut mm -hmm. was saying this isn't right forever. Yeah. So having to learn to differentiate between the two guts and then follow the harder one, mm -hmm. which is the real one. Oh, God. That was I wouldn't wish that upon anybody because it is tough to do. Yeah. And the second you can differentiate that there's two, you get really bad news, which is like 
Oh shit. Oh, I gotta do that thing that I can't I can't possibly do, which is leave this marriage. Like I Ugh. can't do that. I'm so sorry. And so my advice to people though is if you can learn to differentiate between the two guts, and if you have the guts to follow the one mm-hmm. that's true to your heart, yep. it's gonna be a really shitty time period, but long term happiness that I don't even think you knew existed. Amazing. So that's the good news. No, that's really good advice. And like you went through a ton this year. Of course, you're going to have advice. You know what I mean? I feel like people learn through failure a lot too. Such perspective comes mm-hmm. out of it. It's incredible. So what do you say to people who say divorce is the easy way out? Oh, yeah. I love this one. Um, well, anybody that says divorce is the easy way out, has never been divorced. Yeah. I will put a lot of money on that bet. And I say to that, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe, maybe it's the easy way out if you're careless Mm -hmm. and irresponsible by the duty of marriage yeah I took it very seriously okay he took it very seriously too mm-hmm. the word marriage mean, means a lot to me yeah and I think it should I think it's a really beautiful special thing yeah both him and I have parents that have been married for over 30 years wonderful beautiful marriages mm-hmm. trust me when I say we wanted that yeah um and it and it was the hardest thing I've ever done and I think ever will do mm-hmm. I would say what I actually yeah. think is it's a divide okay. between a, host, a historic way of thinking mm-hmm. and condemning that once you marry somebody, you can't leave them yeah. no matter what that means. Right. That's true for a lot of people. And I do think mm-hmm. the more you work through something with somebody, like if you decide that's your path, yep. and you're going to die on that cross. Yep take it and go. Right. And I think when you sit there 40 years into marriage and look through all you've been through, Mm -hmm. yeah, I think there's a lot of beauty that comes from that that's like built beauty. Yep. And I think that is one path. Yes. Now, if that's not your path, Mm -hmm. then I think divorce is the hardest route ever because you're saying I'm going to put my life first. Yeah. And a lot of people are going to view that as failure. Yeah. And you're going to feel like you failed. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's actually giving you another version of life. No, that's such a good point. And I think that the way you spoke about it, it shows how nuanced it is. And I think it's like so easy to be like, divorce is the easy way out. But it's like you have to look at each individual situation. You know what I mean? You don't know unless you've actually walked in that person's shoes. And so you just like try not to judge people is what I say. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, it's so funny to me because I can't imagine an actual world mm-hmm. where like this was the easy route. Right. Like I'm like, it was pretty hard. I, I can almost not answer the question because I'm like, that was the easy one. Mm-hmm. Cause yeah. let me tell you what the easy one was. Yeah. The easy one was sweeping it under the rug mm-hmm. and still being married to him today. Yep. Still having that feeling. Him probably that neither of us are optimizing for our lives and what we want. Right. We feel beholden to each other. Mm -hmm. And we're so young. We got married so young. We don't have kids yet. How old were you when you got married? 25. Okay. And it's like, you know, I'm 30 now. Mm -hmm. I'm a totally different person. He was a different person. He wanted to go back to Oklahoma, live near his family, do Mm -hmm. that there. I wanted to stay here in New York. I love the life I've built here. Right. So you're telling me that us two people that want two very different things, but love each other. Yeah. But we've grown up a lot. You're telling me like the easy route Mm -hmm. was just to not fight for that since you love each other on a baseline. Yeah. And say, all right, one of us will sacrifice. It's like, yeah, no, I get the easy route was hell. I'll go to Oklahoma. He'll stay here. They've actually, there's statistics out there that say people who get married after the age of 30, those marriages last way longer just statistically speaking, because I feel like, yeah, like you do get to know yourself better. And I'm not saying everyone who's, you know, gotten married before the age of 30, their marriages are condemned. I don't think that's true. But I just, I do think that you grow up a lot in your 20s and you have a better sense of self in your early 30s. And not to discount the four years of marriage you had. No, not at all. I think there's a lot of truth to that. And you know what I've been thinking more recently if I, if I had gone out of state to college, mm-hmm. 
I think things could be different because I would have grown a lot in that period. But I'd never left Oklahoma. You never left 25. home. Yep. So I'm growing at a different pace. Yep. I'm evolving now in ways that maybe I could have at 25 and I would have known different. Totally. But I took a different path, you know, so it's like. But this is the path you took. This is your life. Totally. Can't go back. Don't. And I wouldn't change a thing, you know. Yeah. And same. And I've had hard times, too. And it's like, would I change it? I don't know, because it's who I am today because of those things. Yeah. That have happened. Would you say like somebody asked me this last night, actually. Is there one thing you would change about your hard past or is it entirely the reason you are who you are today? I would not change anything because it's who I am today. And it's like, yeah, of course, like it would be nice to change certain certain things. But I think I'm like such an empathetic person. And like I w- I'm able to give good advice because I've been through the ringer myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like some people, the people who are the most judgmental, I almost wonder if they haven't had hard times themselves. Oh, girl. The amount of empathy. Mm-hmm. And I and you can't get it from reading a book. You can. Or no, having a truly. kind heart. Yeah. I mean, it's, you got to go through some shit to find that empathy. To really know. Yeah, and it, it's, it hardens you, but it softens you. Totally. And I agree with you. The empathy is overwhelming when you get to the other side, and it's a really sweet thing. Yeah, and I'm sure you're a great example for a lot of people who are struggling with the same things that you struggled with, and they can look to you and feel hopeful. Uh, you know, I haven't thought about that yet, but what I didn't have really going through it, that's not true. I did end up having it from a couple people I can think mm-hmm. of right now. Okay. Reaching out to me saying, hey, what you're going through is okay mm-hmm. and you're human. And I went through it and I ended up so happy. And in having that sort of, like I had to find influencers who had been divorced and remarried. Yep. Or who had just been divorced and were happy. Yep. To start to follow, my therapist was like, find some examples of people you can look up to. Because they're a few steps ahead of you. Totally. And mm-hmm. it's a success story. Yep. And and so being able to have that and having those people that had that earned empathy mm-hmm. and them reach out was, heck, part of what got me through it, you know? Yeah. No, that's so impactful. Um, so kind of shifting gears. Well, actually, I have one last question. Um, what was one... Okay, I'm going to try to say this question well. What's one part of your identity that you were unable to fully explore in your marriage that you hope to in your next partnership? You know, this is not a knock at him. Okay. It's a knock at me. Okay. I never allowed myself to be fully Alex Mm. because I existed happily existed for him and with him Mm -hmm. and as part of him. Mm -hmm. And I was, I loved it and I was so happy to do it. Yeah. But the, the older I got and the more I explored, I sort of found like there's this Alex in there. There's like this little girl from Oklahoma that just really wants to go spread her wings and like, and it's not that he wasn't letting me because the most beautiful thing about him was he was always like, you could just go be you. Yeah. But it was still hard for me to do that. And that had everything to do with me and not him. Mm-hmm. So what I want to make sure I do next time yep. is just never be anything other than me mm-hmm. and make sure to really hold on to that and keep that sacred. I think that's so meaningful because I've personally never been married, but there's so many like dating gurus out there and they're like, follow these rules, say these things and you'll make him fall in love with you. Or, you know what I mean? This is how you attract a man. And I think that just hearing your journey and hearing your story, like I think being authentically you is going to attract the right person and not necessarily like following such like rigid rules that people think you have to just to land in a marriage that you might not even be aligned with. That's actually a good point that I haven't thought of because I've said, like, I want to be myself. Mm -hmm. But your question is, like, what do you want to do in your next relationship? And I love that you say there are all these dating rules out there. Mm -hmm. And I've had to shift my mentality now to, like, okay, so now you're, like, dating people. Yeah. And if you follow those rules and things, well, you're not being yourself. You're actually following what someone else is telling you. Right. You're being someone else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're like a robot. Mm-hmm. Somebody's like pulling the puppet strings. So that's an interesting parallel that you say. Like it even applies there. Yeah. 
Like you just have to be like, F it, I'll text him first or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Just because like your heart wants to. Yeah. And just be authentic. And people love authenticity. They resonate with it. So speaking of dating, what has been the hardest part about re-entering the dating scene post-marriage? Well, the hardest part was I didn't know. People be like, what's your type? Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, I don't know. Yeah. I've never had to think about that. Mm -hmm. um, and I had to learn, like, what I valued yeah. more than anything else. Because you, you can kind of go on some dates mm -hmm. and be like, <laughs> Ew, does it do we? Sorry. No, no, oh, no, it's totally fine. Okay, stop. Okay, Aww. continue, sorry. Um, so cute. I, I kind of had to say, like, it's almost like trying on shoes. Yeah. And, like, they all sort of fit. Mm-hmm. But you don't, like, like the way they all look. Yeah. And it's like, you get to pick one shoe. Yeah. So, like, which one do you like the most? Uh-huh. But, but again, a lot of them were fitting. Some didn't, and that was easy, and you would throw them out. Yeah. But other than that, it was this really weird thing of, okay, can I, like, see a life that way? Okay, well, this person does this. Would I? And it's like. It is kind of like trying on shoes, like, or, like, stepping into different life paths depending on who the person is. Yeah, because, like, I now know what it's like. I have, like, an advantage, mm -hmm. which is I know what it's like to walk a mile in those shoes. Yes. So I know what I'm signing up for. Uh -huh. It's just, like, what pair of shoes do I want to put on? And when I'm walking, when my feet hurt, which ones am I going to want to be wearing? Yeah. And it's, like, thinking about it that way. Mm -hmm. Like, marriage for me is not unknown. Marriage what? Marriage for me is like not an unknown oh, thing. Oh, no, you've done it. Yeah. So I kind of know what we're looking at. Totally. So it's like, what do you want to look at? And, and let me tell you what, I got to get number two right. Yes. So. And you will. No doubt. Like, yeah. I have no, I have some like very odd detachment from that where I just know I will. You just know. Yeah. It's like a feeling. Totally. Mm -hmm. So that's the hardest part is just saying like, really, what do you want? And being honest with yourself and going for it then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you meet your dates? Is it like the DMs? Is it dating apps? IRL? How have you been meeting dates? Zero dating apps, zero DMs, um, mu like mutual friends or setups. Okay. And, and there was a whole slew of them. And I said no to like, a, like almost all of them. Okay. And I would just went on like a couple. And the ones you said no to, why were those a no? You weren't attracted? Was it like they didn't meet certain criteria? It kind of had to be like a hell yes. Okay. That's fair. And if it was like a, I don't know, I just didn't have like the brain power. Yeah. I was just kind of doing my Alex thing. Yep. Like I love just going home, living alone, lighting my candle, journaling. Like, yeah. And I'm like, for you to take me out of that, you have to be great. You got to be really, mm -hmm. yeah. And it has to feel right. And so there really wasn't a lot of those. Okay. Um, and there was a couple, and I just would go. Yeah. That's great. Was it like awkward, like at first being like, wow, I was married and now I'm on a first date again? Like, was that kind of a weird identity crisis? Or was it just like you had to move forward? It like, it, it like wasn't because I think one, they knew. Okay. Two, the way I said it was just like, you know, you kind of create your narrative. Mm. Got married really young, different now. Yep. There's kind of that story. It is what it is. Yeah. And yeah. most people that like live in New York or LA understand that. Mm -hmm. So that was, and I, and I just kind of like was quirky about it and it just sort of played. I love it. That's great. Um, do you feel like you know exactly what you're looking for now? And I know you kind of already answered this, but did your priorities shift in any ways compared to the first time you got married or like when you were dating before you got married versus when you're dating now? Oh yeah. And like, what are your priorities? Well, I think I used to have my priorities. I don't know how to say this other than I'll describe a feeling, I guess. Mm -hmm. They used to be pretty intense and heavy. Mm -hmm. And it used to be this like, pick the right one and pick it for all these different reasons like your family your friends the xyz yep i have this like much lighter energy a, yes yep. that's a great word energy mm -hmm. for it now which is just like you'll know go for the feeling go for the feeling i love that yeah and mm -hmm. make sure on a baseline level when shit hits the fan that this is somebody that you want to get through that with 
1000%. A lot of people say like they want the shiny guy. They want the guy who's like the star in every room, which of course that's appealing. But it's like you also want the guy when you get sick. They're going to be by your side and take care of you. When you have a baby, they're not going to be like gross about it. Like they're actually going to be supportive. And so it's like, yeah, you want the shiny guy, but you also want the guy who makes you feel safe. And and that's a really great point because I think my therapist said when I was talking to her about, you know, I don't think we're going to make it. Mm -hmm. She said, okay, well, let's think about this. Mm -hmm. You Let's think about the worst case scenario, which okay. is you've been on a whole year of dates and they all suck and every guy's an asshole and you lose your job and you can't pay rent and you're sitting on a couch like broke as can be, like that level of rock bottom. Mm -hmm. And throw in another like really shitty thing that's happened that year, you know, something, you know, and she says, at that point then, are you okay being alone and are you okay with the decision you were going to make? Ooh, that's a good one. And I was okay with it. Mm -hmm. Like still ending that marriage as wonderful as he was, it was still the right thing to do. Yeah. So now I look at that scenario and I say, okay, the worst day that can happen, mm -hmm. not because on the, on the best days, I pretty much got myself right. And he'll be great then too. But like, I, I now know Alex is good on the good days. Yep. But on the really bad days mm -hmm. is this next person like, is he going to have me then? Yeah. And like, that's, that's the guy I want. Totally. That's so important. What is your current relationship status? Mm. Wow. I haven't like really said that. Um, Ooh. <laughs> taken. How about that? Taken? Yeah. That's so exciting. Um, how did you meet this man who's taken you? We were set up okay. by a mutual friend Yep. who, it was a girl, and I was at happy hour with her. And at the end of it, she was just like, okay, can I set you up on a date? I'm and obsessed. I was like, oh, I was like, yeah, you can, because she's like so cool. Mm -hmm. You just, trusted her judgment. Totally my vibe. Yeah. Like so much so that I was like, actually like, yeah. Yeah. And I didn't know if she was going to text us, the, you know, the next day together or not. Yeah. I knew he lived in LA and she did. And I didn't go on the first date. You did? Did not. Okay. Couldn't. You ghosted? I texted him and told him, but it was the week of the live shows. And oh. I just was in this headspace and you the were timing, busy. timing wasn't right. Yeah. I didn't feel right. And so three or four weeks later, um, the stars kind of aligned. And so he was back in town and he's like, can, can you do dinner? And I was like, totally. That's hot. Yeah, it was, I love that. It was great. It was so hot. I was like, oh my God, yeah. I love when a man just goes for it. Like he knows what he wants. I was that flattered. That does a lot. Yeah. yeah. I was not, he didn't keep texting me by any means between the two. Okay. So that was also hot. Mm -hmm. Like he was just coming back in town, made the call. Yep. And made so, the second move. Yeah. And like yep. we had some like travel things to talk about a little via DM, slightly text in the interim. Yep. Like once a week. Okay. Maybe. And then came back in town and he called. Yeah. Oh, the call is the big thing. Oh, yeah. It was yep. big. And I was just like, all right, this guy, he's got it going on. The follow-up, the call, and the dinner. I think that's hook, line, and sinker. That's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Guys should be taking notes right now. Um, okay. And then how do you feel about the launching? Because, okay, it sounds like ever since that dinner, was it just like that dinner one and done? Like you knew, like by the way, when I say you knew, I'm not saying you're going to marry him or anything like crazy like that. What I'm saying is like, did you know that you wanted to keep seeing him? No question. Okay. So you knew right away. Like, did you know within like 30 seconds? Was it like the whole dinner or like, how did it kind of go down? I knew when I saw him because I hadn't seen him in person. I'd seen him on Instagram. Okay. And we had FaceTimed. Oh, okay. That's we, good. We FaceTimed two nights before he came in town for the date mm -hmm. because we were talking about something. And then I just switched it to FaceTime. Mm-hmm. And the FaceTime is what got me, like, I'm like, all right, I'll go on a date with this guy because we get along so well on FaceTime. Yep. So I hadn't seen him in person yet, and I'm not like, looks aren't everything, mm -hmm. but they are a lot. Yeah, you need to be attracted. I want to be, sure. like, really attracted yeah. to this person. So when he, he had picked me up in an Uber, and when he got, he was standing outside the car. And I was like, okay, he's actually six two, and I'm like, a, I'm like a five nine, five ten. Yeah, so. you're a tall girl. Yeah, I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't need your roster height to be six two, but you're actually six foot. Mm. And he was like a true six two, and I, I loved his charisma and the way he carried himself. Yep. So I had a crush, I call it, mm -hmm. for the first like 15, 20 minutes. Yep. When we sat down at the restaurant and I like relaxed, and the food came. 
that was when it like turned and I was like, oh, and I like like him. Yeah. That's and such a fun feeling. It was so fun. Mm -hmm. and yeah. It was such a fun night. Like I can't build a better first date in my head. Okay. And so I just was like, and I said to myself, is it a little early like for me to get this good? Mm -hmm. You know, do I like deserve this? Yeah. And I loved what somebody had said this to me. I was like, I don't know if I deserve to be this happy this soon. And I said, oh, sweetheart, I think, I think you paid your dues. I think you did. They're like, and also there's no timeline for happiness. There's not one. Be happy now. Take it and run. Like, yeah. why would I be like, oh, I don't deserve it. It's like, are you kidding me, bitch? It's fine. You can yeah. have it. Yeah, don't block your blessings. Take oh, all that, that you can get. Yeah, and you could have you could have self-sabotaged, block your blessings. And I'm so happy that you're, like, enjoying it and having fun again. And you deserve love. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone does. I do, too. Yeah. I love don't I love don't block your blessings. I mean, I'm so about to Instagram that when this is done. No, do be, it. Like, best quote ever. Yeah. Um, but I think we as humans are so funny because mm. like you leave a marriage for what? N not to be single, like, right. you know, to end up happier. Like I do want a family. So then you find somebody that's like, great. And I'm like, do I deserve it? And it's like, you do. Why do we have to constantly go straight to the negative? Mm -hmm. It's like, just enjoy it. Just do it. Enjoy it. And like, honestly, momentum is everything. And you're now on like this upward trajectory and like the positivity is going to keep spiraling. I'm like basically a life coach at this point. You are. And can yeah. I say something on the momentum? Yeah. One thing. So we kind of had this. I went to Paris and that was what I put on my Insta story. Mm -hmm. Like, do I go to Paris or London? And that was when, that was like the first time he had talked to me since I ditched the first date. Okay. And he was like, it's Paris. And like, I, I happen to know it very well, but like, you need to go to Paris. Wow. So we started like talking about that, right? Mm -hmm. And then when he came in town the week after, um, he said, one, he said, you can't buy momentum. Mm. And so I love that you just said like, you know, momentum is such a thing because if you have it, write it. And a really good way to stop momentum would be to block your blessings. Yep. And it's like, if you have the momentum, just ride the momentum with like no fear. Mm -hmm. And that is such a feeling of like feeling alive and happy. Yeah. And I've, I've, so I've really felt when you said momentum, I was like, oh yeah, I feel the momentum thing. And then after your first date, were you guys going like on a date a week or like, how did it kind of transpire? It transpired just like very quickly. Just quickly. Yeah. Just, he was like in town and he left town and vice versa. And so we just, Yeah. Because, again, people are, like, they get so caught up in the technicalities. But it's, like, if there's something good happening, ride the wave. See where it can go. Don't overthink it. Um, okay, so what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So I saw your Instagram. Did you soft launch before you hard launch or did you just hard launch? I thought you kind of just hard launched. Okay, I get this confused. Is soft launch the Insta story? The, no, soft launch is, like, a hand. A foot, a handhold. Like, it's like something that's implying that there's a man around, but you're not showing his face. The hard launch is, like, face. No, I just went straight to the hard launch. I love that about you. I just, I just was like, all right. You weren't playing games with us. No, yeah. no, I've played enough with everyone that I was like, here is the photo. Yep. Here's what he looks like. I honestly, so I said in my head, I was like, listen, maybe around January I'll be ready to do it. Mm-hmm. It's like December, early December. Yeah. And it was a really cute photo that a photographer took. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, you know what? I like you so much. I really don't care. Like, and it kind of solves the problem of the DMs too. Yeah. You just say, here it is. Yep. Because like, I don't want to be in the DMs. Like, that's just, it's it's not, I love that for girls. You mean DMs like getting hit on, getting asked out? Totally. Yeah, I get it. And it's like, you know... I just want, it's not about that for me. Like, I really like love working and I love, there's so many other things I love right now. Mm -hmm. Dating would be fine. It wouldn't be probably a priority for me. Yeah. But he fit so seamlessly into like my life and what I was doing. And I liked him so much mm -hmm. that I just was like, let's just solve this problem, you know, inside out. Yeah. Here's the pick. So was he cool with that? Because I'm sure his friends and family were like, woo, because like you're a public person. Well, I've never tagged them. Oh, okay. So. But they still see. You know, and, and that's coming any day. Yeah. And they yeah. still see. And they, mm -hmm. and they just were, they were so sweet. Like his family and his friends were just like, okay, cute. So you guys are pretty official. Yeah. Honestly, I saw his photo and I saw your guys' photo together and you guys look so cute together. You look so happy. Oh, thank you. I, I would, would want to post that picture too. You looked amazing. I'm so happy that I'm yeah. just like. And I love the picture and it's like, 
well, I would Instagram this typically, so why would I just not write? I didn't want to. I didn't want to like get cute with the launching. Yeah, I wanted to. Mm-hmm. In my head, I was gonna plot that. Okay, and then the feelings overtook, and I just went with that. You have to go with the feelings. Um. Okay. So I know we have a few listener questions. Um, just so that the boys who are listening can get a good feel of what a good first date is. I know we kind of touched on it, but what do you think is like an ideal first date? So I have totally shifted on this. Okay. But it is not just drinks and dinner. Okay. I think the most ideal first date is something that takes you a little bit further outside your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So for instance, a couple things that we've done is like we went to the driving range and hit balls and then went and like he had to teach me how to golf kind of you know that's cute and that was cute and then you go to you go to happy hour and then you go to dinner Mm -hmm. that was really fun he took me to a museum oh nice like it was it's called the balloon museum and it he checked it was super i think i've heard of it not cheesy at all yeah like really freaking cool okay and that was it was so it set it set all the other dates so far apart because in your head you go on a ton of dinner dates. Yeah, can't remember the restaurants, but like somebody that's like I'm gonna take a risk here, and he prefaced that when I got in the car. Mm-hmm. He was like, "We're doing something I've never done," which is an absolute no on a first date. Yeah, and it was so fun to like be in that together. I love it, and I, so, I love an experiential date. So, are you going with like doing an activity? Yeah, I'm going with doing an activity. I think you, I think if you guys are fun, like do have drinks around it, right? There's like champagne at the museum and mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah. So don't make it so activity based, but it was yeah. a nighttime. Like it was a 8 PM. It was a very short activity. It was like 45 minutes mm-hmm. and then you go to dinner. Yep. But there's only so much you can learn about like sitting at dinner with somebody. So throwing in, even if it's like walking from point A to point B. Yeah add some element of activity in there. I recently have been going on more dates where there's activity and then dinner afterwards. And I think that's so hot. It's so hot. It's like a whole experience. And you get to see them in a different element other Mm -hmm. than somebody being your waiter. Yeah. You know, like all like across each other stiff. Yeah. All you get to, all you gather from that is like how they treat the wait staff. That's your only like outside parameter perspective. Mm -hmm. When you're doing an activity, it's like, do they pick up the ball for you? Like, do they hold yeah. all those doors? Like, what are we, you know, are they cute? And do they have spunk? And I don't know. There's so much you can learn. Do you have any dating rules that you want to share with the class? Because, like, I feel like you're good at getting great men. So, you know, us singles would love to learn from you. Well, I, you know what I think is, like, I didn't play games with mm. anybody. Okay. Um, And one of the, actually, he told me this the other day. He was like, you do realize you just always said what was on your heart, like mm. through every stage of this. And I've always been a bit unfiltered. Yep. But I just thought, why would I be anything other than like, hey, just by the way, yeah. just so you know, I really like you. Mm-hmm. And he'd be like, what? And I'd be like, I just have the biggest crush on you. Like, just had to say it. And I'll like walk off. That's so funny. And I'll kind of make it silly. Mm-hmm. But like, I, I want him to know like where I'm at. Yeah. And if that ends up, you know, because why would you not do that? Will you be afraid of hurting yourself? Yeah. Putting yourself too far out there. Mm-hmm. Well, there's just as much, if not more risk in that. Yeah. At least I can sleep at night knowing I told him how I felt. Yeah, you were your true self. And then if it doesn't go your way, then it's not meant to be. Yeah, put a little quirky spin on it. Totally. Yeah, have fun with it. Don't be so, like, stiff and intense. Yeah. Okay, I like Like, that. don't lose your humor about it, but just be like, yo, just in case you didn't know, like, you look so hot tonight. Yeah. And he's like, what? And you're like, you look hot. Like, I just needed to say it because I was thinking it. This is the best dating advice ever. I'm obsessed. Okay, I have a few other questions. I don't want people to kill me if I don't ask you. Um, is it exciting to be dating someone new? Is it hard to not have wife tendencies? Yeah, you know, <laughs> uh, it's very exciting to be dating somebody new. Okay. Um, and wife tendencies, you know, you got to know a little bit about Alex to know that I like can't book a flight. Mm-hmm. Like I was not at home with the apron on. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just was Yeah, I, like I might currently have lost my wallet and I just found it and like I'm going to go get it after this. But like that's I love me it. and that's yeah. always going to be me. Mm-hmm. And at early on, I like wanted to do all the wife. Ten- like I was like trying to be like the wife mm-hmm. by definition. And then I realized like I can't fit in the definition of that. You don't fit in that box. That's not. Yeah. Yeah. So wife tendencies. No, because I've just always sort of had like Alex tendencies and I still have those and I'll always have those. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, are your non-negotiables different after your first marriage? No, my non-negotiables are are the same, and okay. I don't have very many of them. But it's they're very core value based. What are they? Like honesty is mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. Um, how you handle conflict. Um, how you know your level of ambition, mm-hmm. but what's important to you at the end of the day when it's all said and done? Like, mm-hmm. is that materialistic things or is that like being a fucking good person? Yeah, and like those core values to me are they're always set in stone. Set in stone. They don't change. Friends, yeah. business. Yeah, that's yeah, that's really cool. Um, okay, I know it's time, so thank you so much for coming on. Um, where can people find? Well, before we go. What's your biggest piece of dating and relationship advice for everyone out there? Could be anything. And then we'll have you plug yourself. Well, I I think the dating advice is ignore the rules. Mm-hmm. That does not give you a, a pass to be like toxic though. Okay. So you don't get to be like, I am just going to text him first when you've texted him first, like the last 75 times. Read the room. Don't triple text. Let's not do any or of that. Or even double texting. I'm like a little anti. Yeah. Let's mm-hmm. like, let's read the room. Yes. But if you. Social awareness, self-awareness. If he's giving you a lot, by all means, give it back to him. Mm. Like, I think it's okay to meet them halfway and just like reassure them how you're feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and be kind of cute and quirky about it because th- that softens the delivery. Yeah. And then my dating advice is it's going to be because I think I should just I'm I'm the person to do this one. If you're questioning your relationship, Mm -hmm. um, go to your real gut, not your taut gut, not the gut that is worried what everybody thinks, but the real gut and follow that. And I think if you can do that. It's probably going to sometimes not be the message you want to hear Mm -hmm. because it's going to ask you to do hard things. But if it's asking you to do hard things, follow it because it leads to so much happiness. So that that's my advice there. Um, And then you can find me at at just Alex Bennett on all platforms. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time today. This has been an amazing podcast. So thank you. Well, thank you. And I love the way that you talk about things and your perspective. Thanks. So it's a really, yeah, I've done a lot of interviews, but this one was really unique. So thank you. Amazing. Okay, bye guys.